What one speak, I thank you. What one speak, I sit in order for the Honorable Macho. A renowned Simagola. To insinuate that I am quiet over a matter I have not given opportunity to comment on is in order as a smuggler to insinuate that I'm quiet and am I known for being quiet over national and international issues is in order. Honorable member, honorable member, since this issue came up, you are the mover of the motion and you know how much popularity you gained in this country. But from the time this issue was raised, we have not heard from you. It is true you are quiet. <laughs> Honourable members, we got a letter from Gemma on, in that regard. And the letter, when we, when we got from Gemma, of course we expected you to say a word as the proof of the motion. A personal statement that you are not working with the with anybody for you to, to represent your country, represent your people, to protect the family of, you, of, of our people. I want to thank you, Rotor Speaker. Rotor Speaker, let me go on record and state as follows that the anti homosexuality law is the most popular law in the history of this parliament. By partisan, all shades of opinion were behind this piece of legislation. Number two, Rattron Speaker, at a function I attended in Bujiri, where the Honorable Kasule Lumumba was chief guest, the NRM chairperson, Saidi Kagere, and a couple of many other people enjoined us as parliament to come out with the law on homosexuality. It was on the basis of those calls that right old speaker, I came to your office and requested that I move this bill. So it is a matter that arose from the grassroots. In fact, the people of Bujiri are so proud and excited about this piece of legislation. But not only Bujiri, the entire country. So it is actually not true that anybody could have used any of us to bring that piece of legislation because in any case, it is not new in this parliament. Right on, Speaker, I have been around for a long time. I have been in prison. This government has imprisoned me. I've been in Luzira. This NRM government has put me in prison. I've been a political prisoner before for fighting for what I believe in. But right now, Speaker, I'm also aware that forces promoting homosexuality are very strong. They have money. They have influence. And I know that some of our colleagues are under pressure. There is a lot of pressure, there is a lot of intimidation. And I have engaged them, these forces, I have engaged them. Because they have come to my office from Britain, America and the rest. They are looking for allies. Allies to promote that immorality in this country. I want to be on record, right on speaker, that as a country we must stand our ground. God who created us will make us survive. This idea of saying we are cutting aid, we don't come to America, don't go to Britain, yes, it is their right. But nobody should determine how we think. Right on speaker, polygamy in Europe is criminal. Who has complained? If I was in Europe, I would be in jail because I'm polygamous. Yes, I would be in jail. Polygamy in, in Europe is criminal. What is wrong with homosexuality being criminal in Uganda? This display of double standards, it's actually not display of double standards, it is display of no standards, cannot be accepted. So let us stand our ground. This parliament took a decision 
We are proud of that decision. We must condemn all efforts intended at undermining the sovereignty of this parliament and also thank the sovereignty you. of this country. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker, I want to thank you uh, and the, the provocation of, of, of the smuggler has yielded. Order, order. order. No. Speaker, cross, cross border trade. Right, Speaker, I, 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 I withdraw the statement. The order of Macho is the cross border trade. Cross trader. border trade. I withdraw the statement. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable members, we don't regret passing that law. And I want to thank the President of the Republic of Uganda for really assenting to that law. Some people thought that the President was not going to assent to the law. I am proud and happy with what the president did. We will continue protecting the family. We will continue protecting the family, protecting the rights of our children and, we, and our country, and we will not live in handouts because you want to buy a visa. My visa was cancelled. Have I died? I have said so long as you don't cancel a visa to Bukedea. I have my home and Buyende. I will go there freely. You can, you can cancel the other visa, which is okay. We will not. The blacklist that they are talking about, don't care. Don't worry about that. You have all what you need in this country. In Uganda, so long as your kids are not being sodomized. Your kids are living a life. This business of saying that you're going to use people's children must stop. Honorable members, on the same. Yes, Bualu, doctor. With you, that we stood here on the floor of this parliament. Our people told us, go and pass the anti-homosexuality bill. And we did write that. Those who don't want that law, let them leave our country. They go and live in UK, they live in London, they live in US, or wherever they want to live. But this law, we are going to protect it with our blood, with our sweat, and our souls. But we must stand our ground. If they want to cut their aid, so let them cut. But we are going to defend this law. And right honourable speaker, you have our full support. As this parliament, we are going to stand and defend that law. If they want to tag this law into their, their aid, let them cut their aid. We will survive. I thank you, right honourable speaker. Thank you, Dr. Church. Thank you, right honourable assembly in Brussels. We stood firm as Uganda and told them that African values are not for sale, whether at wholesale price or retail price. We shall stand with our values and we shall not allow this culture colonization. But I'm also happy that the new partnership agreement of ACPEU, which had provisions of homosexuality, many of the African countries have refused to sign it. So Uganda is not alone in this cause. We are the forerunners, and we need to continue to stand together. Lastly, right honorable speaker, I wanted to react to your communication. A few weeks back uh, in your communication, you had indicated that you had visited Mulago, and you had committed that we will support them. Right Honourable Speaker, I want to appeal to you because on today's order paper we are discussing the supplementary. Unfortunately, Mulago is not within it. They need about $25.5 billion to complete the renovation of Mulago. Mulago is the face, the hand and the feet of our healthcare system. But the face is disfigured. The hand is amputated. The feet has been disabled. It cannot provide specialized services. We need the 25.5 billion shillings for mechanical installations, for plumbing installations. Lifts are not working. We have the first and which will be the first ever organ transplant center ready to start. But it cannot start because the equipment are not functional. So I really want to appeal that we really get a way forward. Last year we had a supplementary, Mulago was left out. The budget for this year, Mulago was left out. This is another supplementary, Mulago has been left out. I uh, appeal on, on that we members, I don't Thank want you. to debate in anticipation because I've not seen the, the supplementary yet. And at the same time, we also agree that the issues of the organ transplant, since there is a law in place, we pass that law, 
that must be budgeted for and must start oper uh, to, to be operational. And secondly, what we need most urgently in Mulago is the human resource. Because when I told you that we have the ICU, there are only 14 beds that are working out of the 29. So it should, we should be looking at the human resource and then the rest we must include it in the, in the budget. Uh, honorable members, I have, yes, Mukatulik. Uh, okay, now that it is. Madam Speaker. Uh, honorable, you, you sit and wait for him to finish his process. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, on the Monday, I read a new vision, and it is a very serious issue we have to pay attention to as Parliament. Government and Ministry of Education is promising to construct city schools in a number of districts, but the central region is not benefiting anything, and it's a budget issue. So I would like to know that this procedure is okay for Ministry of Education to come out clearly and explain why central region has not benefited, is not to benefit a single school, city school, yet all other regions, even if there is another region left out, attention to be given because this is a budget issue that should be given adequate attention, Madam Speaker. Thank you. And the ministers are around. No, they can can, I, to can that. we, uh, I don't want us to rely on the newspaper. Can we have a list of the schools that are going to be constructed, the districts, and then we'll need an explanation based on what is authenticated from the district. So, Minister, you'll give that to us. And, uh, and uh, I don't want to rely on newspapers. Mr. Speaker, let me begin by congratulating you since you came back and um, have not been here. As a pediatrician, it gives me double joy to see that we've had to the population we have because Uganda has put in place a strong strategy for child survival, including immunization. So congratulations, and we are happy, we are encouraged, hoping next year we will have many more ladies. <laughs> to bring more babies to us. Thank you. Madam Speaker, indeed it is true, I have, obliged, or I have accepted your directive that we will bring a document probably indicating the schools that we are con constructing across the country and of course the survey that was done indicating where the need is supposed to be and also the money through the AMP chip and the UCIT project. So I beg to submit. And that. also answer his question, why not central? Why eastern? Why northern? When you're bringing the document, if Thank it is it true, if it is it true. Thank you, I'll do that. And Thank I will you. make sure I answer that. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Yes. Uh, first, then. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise to make a comment on the issue which has been talked about by Honorable Marshall and that to join him and other members that we should remain firm that the law that we passed against homosexuality was the law that we believe in. We believe in our values. We know that there are a number of black males that are being uh, uh, traded around. For example, Madam Speaker, now, in addition to restriction on visas, they have also threatened to cut AGOA, which is a program that we have been uh, implementing with the Americans. So they have said that our products will not uh, access the American market duty-free and quota-free because of what we believe in. So the threats are there, but the House should remain united because this is our country, this is a sovereign parliament, and I think a message should come from this House to condemn the statements of President uh, of Loop, who made real re reckless statements on international television, uh, condemning his own members, condemning his own members that they were influenced by President William Seven. This house was never influenced by anybody. This house was influenced by what we believe in. And therefore, this message should come out from this house to say that, uh, Honorable Chagulanyi, you are wrong. This house has never been influenced by anybody but by the values. And our members from the opposition on this matter, we are together. 
We don't want you to feel abandoned. We are with you. We are together. And we thank stand you. for our values. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we are together with you. You don't work for anybody. You work for your people. Uh, when the minister is up, a minister starts. But he says he will come after. And can I hear from the minister? You are negotiated. You are negotiated. <laughs> this house. Thank you. I, I wish to take this opportunity to thank uh, Honorable Asman for coming out clearly in this house to clear the hair on the accusation that was made on the opposition, on the president, and on this parliament, right honorable speaker. Right honorable speaker, it is true that the decision by parliament of Uganda basing on the demand and support of the people of Uganda to say the country must say no to promotion of homosexuality in the country has touched the homosexuals in a wrong way and they are trying everything it takes to put a condition that would scare the rest of African countries and other countries that would feel like passing the same kind of law not to attempt to do it. And this is why all these pressures are being done. But it's very unfortunate, right honorable speaker, that we have one of our own at a very high level of leadership, a president of a political party in the country and the head of a party in opposition in this parliament, that still moves an extra mile to provoke these homosexuals against Uganda to create more of this pressure. That's why you are looking Thank at this episode. Right, Honorable One. Speaker, I think we condemn this to the strongest term. The country must take this as an advantage to look internally to see how we can survive amidst all these threats. Thank, thank you so right much. Honorable members, as the Honorable Church said, our values are not for sale. We must protect our values. I, I had Honorable uh, uh, Government Chief Whip say he has five children because he's proudly married to a woman. Uh, can I have information? Honorable members, we need to move. Yes, right, Honorable Speaker. I want to start by thanking you because when we were processing this bill brought by our brother, the Honorable President of Jema, you remained firm and steadfast. We know you were the first victim regarding the visa restrictions. But we are Ugandans. Personally, even if you denied me a visa to go to America, I don't think I would die because I am not going to America. So, as a government and as the Ugandans, we should remain very firm. We may be poor, but we are not desperate that you just dangle some resources and then we abandon our values. And the government will definitely respond when we get official communication from the U.S. or any other government that uh, puts these threats. But I think we should remain united as a parliament because this was one of the legislations that united the parliament. We never looked at each other in terms of a political party where we belong because we are, we are defending the values of Uganda. So nobody should be intimidated by these threats from the international actors. If they cherish homosexuality, let them cherish it. But for us, as Ugandans, we don't. And let me add that up to 38 countries in Africa have legislations against homosexuality. So it is also wrong for the Western world to single out Ugandans. And we have told the diplomats and the, the community that we are a sovereign country. One of the diplomats asked me, why did you pass this law? I said, we pass the laws in the interest of Ugandans, not foreigners. And therefore, nobody is going to coerce parliament or coerce the people of Uganda or government to start making laws in the interest of foreigners or people from outside. We make laws on behalf of Ugandans and the honorable colleagues. Nobody should feel intimidated. And Thank also, you. our friends, we advise your leaders of the parties. Yes, you may want to talk sweet so that you get money from 
homosexuals. But I don't think that's correct, and therefore we do not support the remarks made. For me, leave oh. my members. Yes. Leave my members. Mm. Yes, we advised him to sign, and he signed the bill, yes. <laughs> no, I am among those. I am among Thank those you. who explained to the president the science of homosexuality. Yes. And upon that explanation, he signed it. Yes. <laughs> right on, Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Sewungu is saying, I am not the one who advised the president. No, he did advise on medical terms, and yes. uh, we are happy the bill passed. Yes. We, t we now have an act. We only want implementation. Absolutely. And uh, we are good to go. Uh, can I have... Um, uh, Speaker, each and every time the president of Gemma, who is a member of this house, speaks on the bill, which is now an act, you can see how passionate he is. I lead a section of a political party in Parliament under the constitution of my party. I wanted to salute the Secretary General of JEMA, who wrote to the President of the National Unity Platform in regard to the statement that he made about the bill that was passed by this parliament, which is now an act. This must go on record. That uh, JEMA, as an opposition political party, has written to the president of another political party in the opposition. But also, too, it is befitting in African culture, and we have seen this happen, that in the likely event that um, your father seemingly is not interested to keep you in his compound. You can seek refuge, even in the home of your hand or the home of your uncle. The door of the political party called NRM remains open to you, members of the National Unity Platform, in the likely event that your leader does not need you because of the statement he is making. You Thank are most you. welcome to the National Resistance Thank Movement. You. Thank you. Honorable Honorable members in the public gallery. Honorable members. In the public gallery this afternoon, we have a delegation from Arlington Academy of Lubango. Ms. Foy, will you please stand up? You are welcome. We have Ms. Anne Nabutashe. Nabutale, thank you. We have Ms. Rose. Nachi into Birunji, you're most welcome. Thank you so much. They are represented by none other than Honorable Nambeshe. Honorable Nambeshe is a very good leader, and I want to thank you so much for supporting Honorable Nambeshe in his constituency. Arlington supports children who cannot be able to afford school fees and they give them scholarships. And they do it in his constituency. And they also happen to be my parents in Bouquet, they are comprehensive. Thank you so much, you're welcome. And continue bring your children to Bouquet. <laughs> Honorable members, in the Distinguished Strangers Gallery this afternoon, we have uh, a former member of parliament who was rep uh, replaced by Honorable Guam. That is Honorable. She was one of the youngest members of parliament then. And that is Honorable Proskovia Alengot Oromait. <laughs> Honorable Proskovia, you're welcome. And thank you for coming. She's here to witness the proceedings. Now they are saying you have grown. Wama, don't listen to them. <laughs> Honorable members, in the public gallery this afternoon, we have a delegation of district leadership from Bukedea. Yes. The district security committee of Bukedea. 
And uh, here, Mr. Tuke William Oliver Falls, please stand up, my RDC. You're welcome. Love, you, you, you wave to my RDC. Miss Nanono Loy Gift, Mr. Simwe Richard, welcome. Mr. Rally Jude, and Mr. Mugeni Charles, you're most welcome. You see how we are United Nations. Welcome, thank you so much for coming. We are here to witness the proceedings. Yes, the Honorable Right Honorable Abbe. Speaker, having introduced the team from allow me also take this opportunity to tell them that they must bring you back unopposed. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Next item. Item three. Statement by Minister. The eyes have it. <laughs> and the people of Kitukumu will bring on a robot there. I will be there for you. Next item. Item three. Statement by Minister on the commemoration of the World Fisheries Day. Honorable members, you recall that yesterday Honorable Nora Begira raised an issue that Bulisa District was going to host the function and pursuant to Rule 52, one of the rules of procedure, we are here to receive the report. Right, Honorable Speaker, uh, the commemoration of the World Fisheries Day is being commemorated right now in Ibulisa. And uh, being a technical paper, I request that the minister can present that paper when she is back, because right now she's in Ibulisa, officiating at that function. I pray. The function is taking place right now. In this economy, the fishing sector is the second forex earner. But the way we are being treated as people of Uganda is very unfortunate. Right, Honorable Speaker. We want to participate in this economy like any other Ugandan by being treated fairly. Right now, right, Honorable Speaker, we passed honorable, the law. Honorable members, those are issues that law raised yesterday. You raised, Lop raised those issues, and we referred it to the Committee of Human Rights and Internal, uh, and internal Affairs. Right. So you go with your issues, go with your complaints to those committees. You're not going to start discussing about fishing communities here. You should have debated on it yesterday. You should have supported. Speaker, Next item. Speaker. Hey, Dr. Right, Bed. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, I want to pray that when the minister is bringing on the floor of parliament the issues of the fisheries sector, companies are closing, fisheries companies are closing on Lake Victoria because of our policies. They are relocating to Tanzania, to Kenya. We want to hear from the minister of the sector what they are doing to make sure that we don't lose these very, very important companies that are providing jobs and are earning Uganda forex to this country. Thank you. Honorable Minister, Prime Minister, this is also a good culture next time that we have the report before the celebration of the date. Now, it is out of the debate in the House that the minister will get to understand, to feel what the sector is. We will not discuss that report after the celebration. Now, you want us to legislate eh, retrospectively. Right, Honorable Speaker. Yesterday, like I requested here that I'm going to communicate, the minister was here immediately after communicating to her. She had just been delayed. So by the time she came in, we had already started on the debate for... Uh, from on the order. And I am allowing the order for one reason. When you have a report, the report must go to the clerk's office first. 
It must be put on the order paper. You do not smuggle documents on the floor. Madam it Speaker. was Goret, not you. Madam Speaker. No, the order was from Goret. Right Honorable Speaker, I want to thank you for this opportunity and thank you to the Right Honorable Prime Minister for having the cutters and the guts to stand in front of the colleagues, members of parliament, to tell this house that a minister cannot be able to present a statement today. Right Honorable Speaker, this is a day that is known on the calendar. You imagine you being forced to bring a statement. We have 82 ministers. Right Honorable Speaker, can the Prime Minister be given permission to move out and come with a statement? Honorable Members. Honor One of our members, can we go to the next item? But I just, I just want to ask the front bench, government chief whip, when this is a calendar date, you should always make sure that your ministers bring the reports early enough and make sure that it is on the order paper. Even if the, it was brought yesterday, but it was being smuggled inside. Yes, before you first come. You hold. Right, Mr. Speaker, the, the Prime Minister standing is a very good lady. And uh, I hold her in very high esteem and regard. But as a way of helping the Prime Minister and how government... Honourable are... Members, first of all, I want to welcome one person who has come here. Uh, Honourable Matia, you're most welcome. Because there are decisions we are going to take when he's here. Today, Honourable... We are happy you're here. Uh, right on the speaker. With your indulgence, allow me to assist my sister in helping her to advise on how governments are run. So that in the future we don't have these uh, impediments. Last time, we reminded her of the Elders' Day, there was no statement. We reminded her on the Youth Day, there was no statement. Governments are run by keeping dashboards of local and international days. So the next time you have a problem, we can assist my department to give you a dashboard of these activities so that you can guide your ministers and give parliament time to do work properly. So please keep a dashboard of local and international days so that we are not reminded here on the floor to go and produce statements. You, look, you make us look shabby as parliament. And we have now wasted the time discussing the absence of a statement in the face of a clear international framework of a current of days. Please keep a dashboard. I'm advising you as a brother in good faith. Thank but we you. can also assist to provide a dashboard for you to follow so that we do not have these problems again. Thank see. you. Thank you. Honorable members, this date was supposed to be celebrated on 21st November. It was pushed to 6th December and still we never got a report. Next time we need a report early. Next item. Item four, motion for resolution of parliament to authorize government to borrow up to United States dollars 325 million and receive a grant of up to special drawing rights 19.5 million equivalent to United States dollars 25 million from the International Development Association of the World Bank Group to finance the Uganda Climate Smart Agro